This video is going to cover the Computer Repair Simulator user interface. When you start the game, you're going to see a bunch of buttons and icons, and you're going to need to know what they do. So let's start off with the Profile Panel. The Profile Panel is in the top left hand of the screen by default. If you want to move it around, you can click on the top left portion and drag it anywhere you want. This player profile will show a customized picture of the player that they uploaded, their player name, their current level, the ambient temperature of the lab, the player ESD level, and the player total money that they've accrued. At the bottom of this panel, we actually have eight buttons. These eight buttons going from left to right will do the following. The first button is a reset button. The reset button not only will reset your camera if you're in a weird angle, but if you customize your GUI and you drag some of these windows around and you want to reset them, you can click this icon. You'll see everything went back to where it was by default. The second icon is the inventory icon. If you click on this, it will open the player inventory. If you need to move the player inventory around, click the top portion of the window and drag it around the screen. If you want to close this window, move your mouse outside of the window and just hold in right click. The next icon is the player skill panel. The player skill panel will allow the player to invest in skill points to allow them to uh, advance in the, in the game. If you want to move the skill panel around, click the top left portion of the window and move it around the screen. When you're done, move the mouse outside of the window, hold and right click to close it. And the next icon is the shop icon. If you want to move the shop, again click on the top left of the panel, you can move it around the screen and you can select different hardware pieces and purchase them. If you want to close this window, move the mouse outside of the panel, hold right click. The next icon over is for in-game music. This will toggle your play, stop, and next song panel. If you want to turn it back off, click the icon again and it will go away. The next icon over will convert your viewport into a crosshair. So instead of using the left click to move around the screen, you can activate the crosshair and now you can move about the room just by moving the mouse and without holding the left click. Whenever you want to get out of this mode, just use the right click mouse button. The next icon, the question mark, will show in-game help. The last icon looks like a disc icon. This will allow you to load or save your game. This panel can't be moved and it shouldn't really be used unless you're in the PC builder mode. The reason why you don't need to use this is the game will automatically save and load at certain points. The reason for the save and load feature is if you start building a computer, since it can take a little bit of time to put together and you might need to earn more money or you can't you know, finish the job, you can save that and then come back later. It shouldn't be used to save different slots and try to load later like a normal save and load. Uh, because you will lose information. So again, this is only for when you're building the computers uh, and you need to kind of take a break because those scenarios can be a little longer than your normal scenario. All right, so this covers the user profile panel. Let's move over to the uh, quick select icon panel on the left. Now this quick select panel icon can be moved if you click the hand icon and just drag it around the screen. Again, if you want to reset it, use the reset button. And we're going to go over these buttons right now. The first button at the top, the first icon, is the build break icon. If you left click it, you're now able to interact with the computer. So without it selected, I can't come over here and remove anything. This makes it easier for me as the player so I can move around without accidentally clicking on something and messing my project up. So if you left click on this, you'll see it's active. Now I can interact with the computer. When you activate this, there's going to be two additional icons to the right of the hand icon. The top icon, when clicked, will allow you to move your computer around the room. So when you click on the X button, the XYZ, 
it's going to show you a panel that allows you to move the system around and place it however you want to place it. And then when you're done, you can right click the hand icon and the system will drop into place. The bottom icon will reset the computer. So if you do move it in a weird angle and you're not sure how to get it back or reset it, click on the reset button or the normalize button and it will default the computer location. When you're done, just right click on the icon to disable it. The next icon is the brain icon. As you play Computer Repair Simulator, if you get stuck and need to find where the problem's at, you can always try to click this button. When you click on it, you'll see that my hard drive actually turned red. In this instance, we're lucky that we were able to see it, but you're able to move the camera around in this mode when active to try to figure out what's wrong. Sometimes it might be a very small component and it's very hard to see, so don't always rely on this. It's just kind of a helper during gameplay. It also has 120 second cooldown. The next icon is, again, you're gonna to go to your inventory, click on the tool and activate it. And when you activate an item, it's gonna go into your tool belt. If any of those tools, the flashlight, a soldering iron, or an ESD wrist strap, it's gonna automatically populate it up here. These are kind of like shortcut keys to whatever's in your tool belt. Most common tools would be a flashlight, the soldering iron and the ESD wrist strap. As time goes on, if you build your tool belt and you have all three of these items in your tool belt, all of these will become active and you can easily navigate and turn them on and turn them off during gameplay. So it's very, very beneficial to build up your tool belt. So going more about this, um, if we find in the game, we have a certain item such as a screw remove the single screw piece of hardware on the back of the power supply. If we try to turn on the build brake and click on it, you'll see that our message says you need to use the correct tools. Well, it looks like a Phillips head. So I'm gonna to go to my tool, I'm gonna to go to my inventory, find my Phillips head driver, activate it. You'll see now that it's activated, it's in my tool belt. Well, if I try to click on it again, it says you need to use the right tools. Oh, I need to turn this on. So come down here, left click your icon for your tool, and now it's active. You'll see the active notification, and now you'll be able to remove the screws or whatever object that that tool works with. Whenever you want to deactivate the tool, simply right click on it, and if you want to remove it from your tool belt and keep it in your inventory only, then you can right click the icon and you can clear it up for the next tool. Moving along, you'll see that there's a panel at the top, hand, the top part of the screen. This panel can be moved. This is discussed in another training video, but this is your scenario manager. In summary, the scenario manager will document how long that the scenario takes, and it's gonna tell you how many problems are left, problems are left before you can finish the job, and it's also going to tell you how many problems are left that are critical that won't allow the computer to boot. You also have three icons at the bottom. You can ask for help, which is free, and it will repeat what the customer issue is. So looking back into your panel, your uh, event window, it says the computer dropped to the ground and rolled over. It doesn't boot. Well, that kind of makes sense because when we use the brain icon, the hard drive was bad. Well, they dropped the computer and it probably broke the platter. So we can fix that. So if you're not sure still, you can click the tip button. Clicking the tip button will charge your player $1 and it will give you a little bit more of a description. It says, check the onboard memory and drives. It may be broken. The last icon is to cancel and restart the scenario. So if you don't like the job you're on or it's too tough or you get stuck, you can always click this and reset the scenario. Moving on, the last panel that we're going to look at is the event window and chat window. This panel can be moved. You only have to click the white line on the panel and you can drag it wherever you want. Again, if you want to reset, click the reset button and it will send it back home. The event panel is very important because it will explain certain inputs and outputs of the game right now. So as you work on the computer, you may have 
a message, you know, say, let's say if we click this screw, it's very important that you need to use the correct tool. So it's notifying you of what's wrong. So if you're not sure what's going on and you're clicking on something, make sure to check the event window because it will explain the current situation. The icon, I, is by default showing you all the game information. And when you click on it, you'll see there's a window here with all of our events. If you wanna scroll back through the events, you can do that by using the previous button or the top button. There's not many events here, so bring them down. And then there's also a chat icon. The chat icon currently doesn't work, but when you have it selected and press the enter key, you can say, hello, and talk to other users. So let's go back to the information tab. We'll put that back down. And this actually covers computer repair simulator, the user interface.